Hello and welcome everybody to the Main Street Matters webinar. My name is Patrick Kaiser. I am the executive director of Heart on Main Street. Heart on Main Street is a nonprofit organization dedicated to helping independent retailers evolve their businesses and be more sustainable and successful within their own economies. Uh, this is a monthly webinar series. So at the Main Street Matters, we do have them every month typically towards the end of the month, uh, but really dedicated to helping the independent retail community, providing pertinent information uh, and tips on how to grow your business. Our guests today are Beth Rich, owner of Mix It Up Home in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and Mary Liz Curtin. She had some technical difficulties. She'll be jumping on in just a second here, uh, but she is the owner of Leon and Lulu in Clawson, Michigan. Um, both have been recognized as some of the best retailers in the country by the Retail Excellence Awards. So uh, I am very honored to have you all both part of our webinar series as and as well as part of our board of directors. So uh, Beth, thank you very, very much for being here today. You're welcome. It's, it's my pleasure. Oh, thank you. Uh, to Mary Liz, when, when able to jump on, uh, again, very excited to be able to talk to both of you today. Uh, really, today's focus, we're going to be talking about attending a trade show. Uh, I know it's pretty crazy that we're already almost at trade show season again. Uh, for some of you, that is almost a kind of full year cycle, every, going to trade shows every couple months. Uh, others are really kind of focused on the, the winter and summer trade shows, but uh, we're almost in that summer trade show season again. Uh, Beth, thank you very, very much for, for being part of our webinar today. Uh, Wanted to start off talking about the before show season and actually before we attend a show um, and kind of the preparation that's done ahead of time, what you all do, you know, and what I really like about you and Mary Liz is that there are differing uh, mm -hmm. opinions on things. Yeah. You all do not do things the same way, which, <laughs> which is great. Um, yeah. And so it's really, there's not one end all be all way of working through a show and preparing for a show, but really that there's, you know, things that fit your personality. There uh, she is. Excellent. <laughs> all right. Oh, and Mary Liz, you're on mute. It, it, po it popped you back on mute. So. There we go. I think we got there you. There you are. Perfect. Uh, Mary Liz, thank you so much for joining. Sorry about those those technical difficulties. Uh, I was introducing you. Uh, owner it's of all good now. We are all ready good to now. Open. Perfect. <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm just glad she's here because she is the yin to my yang. I mean, it's it really <laughs> is nice to have. Uh, I was saying that you yeah. and Beth really. Um, both obviously go to shows, uh, go to shows, and I know you attend shows internationally and really all all throughout the year, but don't do them in the same way, which is fantastic that we'll be able to kind of get some different perspectives of how you all uh, approach show season. So um, wanted to first start talking about the before shows kickoff and before show season. So one thing I know that you all do differently is appointments, um, scheduling appointments versus not scheduling appointments. Do you all want to talk into how you structure your uh, your time um, beforehand in preparation for going to shows? Uh, Beth, do you want to kick off? Sure. So I I do not have anywhere near the experience that Mary Liz does. So I'm, I've been in retail for five years. I have th brought 35 years of sales and marketing experience to the table, but the my actual retail experience and so because I don't know the industry um, like, uh, you know, a veteran in the industry, I have I feel like for me, I have to rely on um, I'm, I'm still just really establishing relationships and kind of working my way through. So I feel like I speak to um, the retailer who is who is has just kind of starting out and going, OK, I, I don't know everybody. Um, and so for me. Um, I try to manage my time. Um, I, I, I try to balance it because setting a show appointment for me um, is, is a, kind of got a lot of different elements to it. Part of it is is continuing to um, foster the relationship that I have with the vendor and the rep. Um, and being new into the industry, creating that relationship is really important to me. Having a great relationship with the rep that I know I can, uh, when, when I'm have I'm trying to source something and it's out of stock and I want to know when is it coming back into stock I want to be able to have a relationship with the rep where I know that they can get back to me with that vital information and be on top of a return or whatever the case may be so part of part of my appointment in the in the showroom is to continue to foster and grow the relationship I have with my vendor group and with the my actual rep 
Um, part of it for me is trying to manage my time. Um, if I'm in Dallas and I'm in Dallas from for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I'm flying out late Sunday, that's four and a half days. And so it, in that time, I feel like I have to kind of manage it. So literally, I have an, I have a spreadsheet that has all, you know, I've done the analytics to say, who do I need to see? And then I've done where are they in the in the map of the Dallas showroom? Um, Dallas is easier than Atlanta by a mile. Yes. And so, and so uh, but I'm trying to manage my time to say I'm I'm booking appointments so that I'm I'm in the on the same floor in the same building and I'm not spending all this time running from building to building to back. And then one of the things that I do, which I which I know Mary Liz ha it is important, really important to her, and it's it's important to me too, is I always create a window either at the end of the day or on the last day, or I've created a window where I can get, I, I'm always, I'm always looking for something new and something different. And I take time to go to the temporaries and I work that time into my schedule. Wonderful. Uh, that's, um, yeah, having that schedule, I really like the idea of, you know, knowing where they are within the building and trying to maximize your time most efficiently with that. Mary Liz, how do you approach, uh, um, do you create appointments beforehand? And if not, why? I, right, very, I make very, very few appointments beforehand. Okay. Occasionally I'll do it like at Christmas time with a big, big vendor like Creative Co-op where I know it's gonna take us 16 hours. And if I can get a, an appointment first thing in the morning at eight o'clock or 7.30, that's fabulous. But if I try to schedule appointments all day long, they're never on time. I find a lot of time running back and forth. It's very, very difficult. And I find it to be a nightmare to schedule them. If I'm trying to get everybody on the fourth floor of America's Mart building too, well, she's ready and he's not, and it, it wears me out. I tend to take a very geographic pattern. I, I, okay, I tear apart the show book. I pull out all of the uh, floor plans for all the, the floors in the show, paper clip them, and I start at the top of one building, go straight down. And I'll go through that book and circle everybody I cannot miss. But this way, as I walk the show, each floor, I know who I'm supposed to see. And I know, I look at people that I haven't seen before. I think it's easy to get caught up in appointments. And you know, a big part of our, our joy there is finding new vendors, new showrooms, stuff we have not seen before. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if there is someone as you're kind of working your way and they can't see you at that time, how do you kind of work that? You make an appointment, come back in half an hour or you work okay. with somebody else or whatever. Um, I find that it works out pretty well generally. The no appointment, appointment method has been more um, available than the having every single moment scheduled. Mm -hmm. Are you still uh, there? Yes, so we, we, we can hear you. Again, it sounds like maybe having, having some, um, some internet connectivity, but um, so yeah, if not able to see them at that time, you know, schedule something 30 minutes, be able to come back, um, but be kind of being able to work it more geographically within the building. Um, mm -hmm. so that, that makes a lot of sense. I'll interject here, Patrick. I, all, um, and again, I don't, I don't, I haven't been to Las Vegas in a little bit, but um, Dallas and Atlanta both have great market apps. Um, and so, um, oh, hang on, my battery's low here. Um, they both have fabulous market apps. And I have that on my phone. Um, and I'm using that um, when I'm trying, you know, when I'm leaving, I usually have something written down that says exactly where I'm going. Uh, but I, I think both of them have done really great jobs with their market apps to make it so that it's easy to figure out who's where, and, and if you don't have that app downloaded on your phone, I would highly recommend it because it's a it's a really good resource tool. Fantastic, yeah. Um, I am back, I'm sorry. That, that's okay. <laughs> hey, things happen. And again, I appreciate you uh, while out on the road being able being able to uh, work with us today. Well, so they've thanks. set me up. I'm, I'm at Four Hands in Austin. They've set me up with a lovely conference room. I have a big table, I have water. I have a wastebasket to hold up my <laughs> iPad, but their iPad, their their internet is adding and acting in a slightly peculiar fashion. So, right. sorry. That's okay. Uh, so going in kind of in the preparation for show, I know you, you kind of need to know what is on hand and what you have, what you don't have. How do you all, when do you start doing inventory in preparation for show and how do you, how do you plan for that? Mary Liz? I do uh, reorders for all of the people that I'm planning to see at that show. So, and I, I don't do an inventory for the reorder because our, we do inventories on a cycle count all year long. So our database is pretty good. So I'll just run the reorder. So I know 
what we need to get again from those people. And then I go to the showroom and I can add new items, more items, make sure I take care of the show special and I'm ready to roll. I don't try to write reorders in the showroom. I like to have them ready so I can hand them to people when I get there. Okay. Uh, so do, you don't like to write the reorders that uh, while at show, you should have already taken care of that, right? Have have those already placed? I don't like to figure out a reorder in the showroom. I like to have it in my hand, ready to hand them. And then I add to it with whatever's new. Okay. Yeah, and that's it. I'm 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 making notes as Mary Liz is talking because again, she comes with so much experience in the in the industry, and I have such a high regard for that. And that way, I've got everything done from home, right? yeah. and I can yeah. talk to my team about what we might. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Yes. Yeah. And and uh, I have you know I I own two stores now, but to, you know one store is is you know twenty six hundred square feet, the other store is three thousand square feet. So just just the, the the volume of buying that Mary Liz does is, is, a, is a totally different situation. I When she re makes reference to her team, I am my team. Um, and so a, a lot of, you know, I mean, I, I walk around market with, you know, I, I bring uh, the gal that does all of my receiving and everything else, but she's not actually buying. She's really just kind of keeping track of what we bought. So um, one of the things that Mary Liz just said that I think is so important, and it's the first question I ask, and I usually know ahead of time, but what it's the first question I ask walking into a showroom is, what is your show special? You know, I have taken, I've spent the time, the, the time, the money, the effort to be here. And if you're doing a show special, then I want to know what it is so I can take advantage of it. You know, if the, if the free freight comes at $1,500 and we're at 12, I'm going to, I'm going to make something up. I mean, we're going to get, we're going to get to 1500 to get to free freight. And so I, I also really like it if the rep will tell me free freight at 1500 free freight two percent at 2000 i've had those events where you write an order get to 1100 she says oh well guess what you can get free freight okay mm -hmm. fine then she goes oh guess what you could get to it's like could you just tell me all the tiers okay. at once so right. i know what i'm shooting for yeah, and they're great. They're great big vendor companies like Creative Cove and One Coast that have it on a piece of paper. You walk in, they hand it to you. You can walk through the showroom, and you know, again, a, a good rep will send it to you even ahead of time so that you can put that in your planning. Um, we do we do our big inventory at the beginning of the year, and that sets the stage very very much so for the, our January market season. In the summer, we use we're, we're powered by Shopify, and then we use Stocky for our inventory management, and we use that. Um, to really kind of keep, get get a handle, I, you know, I do. I have a, I have a flow, a retail flow, and I have an open to buy. So when I when I go to, um, I, you know, just I, I I was talking this morning with somebody about budgeting, a, a young couple getting married, and they were they were finally having that budgeting conversation, and I was like, oh, well, good idea. Um, but if you don't go to if you don't go to market with a budget, if you don't go knowing, I mean, it's, I, I mean, I, I my budget is a uh, a guideline for me as to what I spend. If I if I come around the corner and I walk into a showroom and see something and I go, oh my gosh, we, like we have to add that, and it's over my budget, I'll make that business decision at the last minute. So I'm not, I don't use it to to um, keep me from making from being creative, but I I still use it as a guideline to know, um, you know, how what do we have you know, what, what do we think we need to have in order to sell what we, we are trying to budget to have? And so how much more do I have to buy? But where's, where's the, where's the cutoff so, to make sure that I don't have too much? So let's talk a little bit more about that open to buy, because I think that is so important when you're going into show to understand where your financial. I think are. a budget. Oh. Am I on? Yeah. Yep. I think a budget is Might have lost you again. Oh, and I want to hear the oh, end of that sentence. <laughs> I know. Oh, Mary Liz, you're moving again. So I think yeah. we got you. What are you saying about a budget? So how do you, uh, uh, Beth, for your establishing your open to buy and establishing the budget, how do you start working with that? Where are you looking kind of, uh, to, to figure out your financials? Yeah, so I I have a retail flow sheet that we keep that we start at the beginning of the year. So and and you know with a with an existing store, I look at what did we sell last year, and how much did we sell on a monthly basis, what were our sales, um, and then I know what my markup is on the merchandise that I buy, and and I I created a, an Excel spreadsheet that just says okay this is what I have, 
you know, this is this is how much I think I need to in order to sell that much again this year. And this is what I have on hand. So my my uh, Shopify and my stocky um, analytics will, will tell me exactly how much I have. And then you, when you subtract it out, it just says this is how much more merchandise you need in order to be able to. But you do all that ahead, don't you? I, everything is all, all that is ahead of time. Um, and that's, that's an Excel spreadsheet that we update on a, on a weekly, monthly basis. So we always know where we are. So I'm, I'm with Mary Liz. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm, when I go to, well, in January, January is different because it's, you're getting, you're buying for holiday and it's, it's just such a robust buy for the year. Um, the June market for me is a, a little bit different because um, January, February, March is not a season for me. Um, I, it's a, it's the slowest time of our year. So buying for spring is really not um, uh, something that we do up here. Um, so I'm, I'm looking to more to fill in for holiday. Mary Liz, what you, we, you got interrupted when you got cut off. You, you said a, a budget to me is, and then we missed the last word. I believe that a budget is really important to make sure you buy enough as well, especially mm -hmm. with seasonal purchases. How much did I do on Christmas last year? How much do I need for this year? Because sometimes, you know, after December, you hit January and the brakes come on and all of a sudden you were selling 50 of a thing and now you're selling two. And then you go to market and you have to think in terms of 50 again to stock yourself up for next year. So I, I'm very careful about it. But for me, the budgets are most important for seasonal goods and um, ready to wear. Those are areas where I really have to make sure we've got the right amount and not too much and not too little. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, having that. Uh, but I like the idea of it, it's not limiting you. It, it allows you to see how much you can purchase and really what your, your creativity is there. Um, we have a question coming from Ginny here. Can you tell us what, uh, what stores you each buy for in, in the size of your stores? Um, just kind of giving a little context for, uh, for our, our viewers. So from what industry? I'm Mary Liz Curtin. And my husband and I own Leon and Lulu, which is a 15,000 square foot magical shopping experience. I buy furniture, clothing, gifts, decorative accessories, seasonal goods. We also have a restaurant with a greeting card shop and a wine shop, which is another 7,000 square feet. And, and uh, 15,000 square feet and it is a magical shopping experience. Yeah. That, that you had me at 15,000 square feet. I'm gonna have to come here, Mary Liz. Um, so I'm Beth Richard. I, I now own two stores in downtown Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, which is a resort destination. The first store is, we just did some rebranding. So the first store is now Mix It Up Gift, and it is a gift store. It is, we have about 2,800 square feet, and it is, um, you know, candles, accessories, jewelry, uh, we highly curated, really, really unique. We, um, we uh, um, specialize, we do wedding, pet, kids. Um, and then when we talk about buying, you know, we, we, because we're a gift store, it is, you know, we hit the season with Valentine's Day, Easter, Father's Day, Mother's Day, graduation. I mean, this time of year is just making sure you have all those things covered. And then five weeks ago, we opened a 3000 square foot home store, two blocks down the street on the same side of the street. So now we have the day we opened it, somebody um, sent me a card with the definition of the word bookend and said, Beth, I love that you have now bookended Sherman Avenue. So we you start at Mix It Up and you end at Mix It Up. So what gift and home. Home store has a 300 square foot fine art gallery inside the store. Um, and it is, I'm now in the furniture rug, um, accent furniture, wall decor, wall clocks, bar carts, hand-painted martini glasses. I mean, you know, all, all, every, all things home. Amazing. So uh, yeah, wide variety of different products in both stores, uh, gift as well as home products, home furnishing, um, really you know, kind of a, a lot of a lot of different uh, different products for uh, at both of your stores. Mm -hmm. Because of that, and so, you know, a, a good part of going in, you know, knowing about trends, knowing about what is going to be exciting to, to look for at show, how do you all research that ahead of time? Um, I know some of it is going to be stores that you or uh, vendors that you go to, showrooms that you're always going to, but especially if you're anticipating maybe those new finds and uh, looking for new vendors, how do you research different trends uh, before going to show? Oh, Mary Liz, you have to start that one. Well, I read the trade magazines. I just look at what's selling in our store and where I think the next area is going to be, whether it's tea towels or coasters. Maybe they will die soon, I hope. We've sold an awful lot of coasters in the last couple of years. So it's always changing. But for me, I want to go there and get inspired by other showrooms, by things that are new and different, exciting for me. Um, I want to mention one more thing about placing orders. Yeah. 
I think that oh my ask the wrong question when they get to a shelter to know what I need to be successful with your life. Do I need $3,000 or I need $500? What does a good display look like? And then people also ask um, what's new, which is certainly fun, but I want to know their best sellers even more than I want to know what's new. I want to know, I want to know what that rep is paying his mortgage with, what is selling over and over and over again, because that's the stuff that I know is going to turn. Then I can play around with what's new. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And with that, I mean, do you worry about- Are we frozen again? Um, I can hear you. Can yeah, you we're good. Uh, do you worry, you know, with it being, you know, what's new or what's hot, do you worry about, you know, that being too commonplace or um, is it, it's going to sell for everybody and it's going to sell for me too? Beth, do you, uh, if we've. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to play off of that because um, I, I use industry magazines. I think gift and decorative accessories. Um, now that I'm in the furniture business, I'm, I, you know, I, I read hat um, and, and I'm that, that's one of the places where I go to look for what is trending. You know, I have a lot of people who now walk into my brand new home store and they'll ask me, they'll say, oh my gosh, like, how do you decide what to pick? And I said, well, quite honestly, I let my, my big national vendor groups that I let their buyers do the work, do a lot of the work. I mean, when I walk into a showroom that I have a uh, you know, it's just like uh, Mary Liz is at four hands. Well, when you walk, I don't even know the brand, but when you walk into that brand, brand, you know, you're relying on them to be able to present you with. It's just what Mary Liz is just saying. You know, here's what's here's what's trending. Here's what here's what we're selling. And then I finish that sentence, Mary Liz, about um, having the you know ha ha asking the rep about um, what's hot. Oh, I love to know what's hot because that's how they're paying their mortgages. Thank you, Beth. I'm sorry about this internet thing. I've reconnected a different way now, so maybe it'll be the magic of the World Wide Web. <laughs> um, I wanna know what's really, really selling. I may not buy it, but it's important for me to know what's moving. One of the things we forget is the longer we're in this business, the more sophisticated we become. So that new little coaster that you think is the cutest, most adorable thing ever, I've seen it for 15 years. However, my customers have not. Mm -hmm. So I can't just buy things that I think are intriguing. I've got to buy stuff that our customers are really going to want. And I do depend on our vendors and our sales reps to help me know those things. Um, I also think it's really important to buy not just the stuff you know is going to sell, but some aspirational pieces that make the other stuff look good. So if you've got a lot of things that retail for $20, you need some stuff in the $50 range and the $100 range mm -hmm. to get people looking at them. And I find that you can generally sell product right up to one price point below your highest price. I call it the icing on the cake. You know, I go to my, I go to the, the big vendor groups, the big showrooms to buy my cake. And then I'll go to some of the smaller showrooms and some of the more exclusive places. You know, I, I do New York now, I do shop object and I'm looking, I'm looking for the embellishments. I'm looking for the icing on the cake, the things that are at that little bit higher price point. I don't buy a million of them. I just have enough of them in to make it interesting. I ran my analytics last night and of the top 10 um, revenue producing product lines that I have, my top product line is an exclusive line that I found in high design in Atlanta. I always make this, if I'm in Atlanta, I always make the time to, to watch, walk every single floor of high design. I'm always looking for something that's just really, really unique and something that's really, um, that you're not going to find in some, in other places. And, and one of the, one of the other things that are in my top 10 revenue producing things is something that I saw on the street outside a store in Denver. I walked down the street. I saw, I saw it, it's a, it, <laughs> I saw it and I went, oh my gosh, I walked back into the store and I said, do you sell these? And she said all day long. And I said, okay. And, and I, you know, I, I, it, it blows my mind how many we sell. Yeah. From a, you know, One of the best things to do in any city is to go through. Mm -hmm. um, a, I've now lost power in the conference room, <laughs> which is why most. Mary Liz, you're a champion for sticking with us. Thank you. Please, so much. <laughs> I, should, I shouldn't tell you where I am. I should pretend I'm at a competitor of theirs. <laughs> um, I think that there's nothing better when you're in a city than to spend some time shopping other stores and looking for things because you can see something in a store that looks great in that store that you've walked by in the market 15 times. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you look at it and give it a shot and you come up with a real winner. So tomorrow, Today and tomorrow, we're touring the factory and the, the warehouse and the art department. And then on Friday, my son and I are going to go shopping in Austin to see what we can find that we don't have. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
and see how it's maybe merchandised differently with something else. Kind of, you have that icing on the cake from other places that make it look different than maybe it was in, in their own showroom. Yeah. And like I said, I think, I think I always make time to get through the temporaries. I, I might go fast if I, you know, depending on how much time I have, but whether I'm in Atlanta, whether I'm in Dallas, it doesn't matter where I am. I'm, I'm going to hit the temporaries because because I'm I'm looking for that company that, that that doesn't have the resources to have a permanent showroom, but they've got something they've got something really really unique. Something up and coming. I find the temporaries one of the most important parts of my yeah. show. Mm -hmm. I would skip an existing vendor before I skip the temps. I agree. And so from a budgeting standpoint, how much do you all allocate for that icing on the top? Um, is it, you know, 10% of your budget that you kind of have set aside? What, uh, you know, what are your thoughts there? I don't have a real metric for that. Yeah. Okay. We, um, like in clothing, which is one of the places where we buy the fun stuff on top of the, the solid stuff, we have a ready to wear per, uh, budget that we stick to. It just means transferring some of the dollars out of practical merchandise into fun merchandise or going a little over the budget. Yeah, but it's it. important. Clothing is a much harder buy than furniture or gifts or decorative accessories. Because frankly, if you don't buy this lamp this year, maybe you'll buy it next year. Selling clothing is like selling vegetables. As soon as I put it on the rack, it starts to rot. Yeah. And you've got a limited amount of time to move it. So you have to be really, really tight on seasonal goods, whether it's um, holiday pride, I mentioned it before, but whether it's holiday product or clothing, you do not want to be overbought. You've got to be careful. Yeah, which is why I'm not in clothing. <laughs> Fair. Uh, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a harder category. It is. Um, yeah. For those out there that are uh, clothing. It's the hardest one of everything we buy, and we buy yeah. a lot of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it can still, you know, in planning for uh, going to show, when do you all start looking at travel? Um, are you, have you already started booking your travel, hotels, airfare, everything for summer shows? Um, I'm booked through October. You're already booked through October. Okay. I, yeah. I only have to buy my trip to Paris. That's the only one not done. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't get to go to Paris this year, but Mary Liz, I'll meet you there next year. Um, I am booked. I booked, um, I booked High Point in, on, in, in December for next, for when we knew we were going to have the, the store. And I've already looked, I do an Airbnb in Atlanta because I'm there for so long. And um, I looked at, I looked at the Airbnbs um, this week for Atlanta for January. Um, I'm already, my hotel is already done for January for, for Atlanta and for, okay. and for Dallas, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I just get into, I get into a mood mm -hmm. and I sit there with my notepad and I start figuring it out and I book all of them like four or five months at a time. Yeah. Good. And then one of the things, Patrick, and this kind of plays into it a little bit, but um, you know, we switched to a, I, I mean, I, I fly Delta. And so I switched to a Delta Sky Miles card for, for that we pay, pay all our bills with. So if I, if it's, April and I'm booking a plane ticket for January, I'm, I'm doing it with miles. So I'm not taking my dollars uh, today and having to, to invest them in a plane ticket for January. We're just putting a plane ticket on the books with miles that we already have in our account. And so it's not, it doesn't cost me any money out of my, out of my April budget to do that. And so you can, you know, snag airfare way in advance and you can kind of make that plan as farther, as far in advance, if you know, that's where you're going and that's where you need to be. It's great advice. You do that. I mean, I'm sure planes, uh, plane tickets are significantly cheaper. Miles, it's going to be a whole lot less. Um, hotels, I'm sure they're very happy to have someone booked out that far in advance too. Mm -hmm. So, um, wanted to talk about um, when you were actually at the show and it, you all were very, both of you were very gracious enough to record a short video when you were at the uh, Chicago ho Homeware shows. Um, just about some of the things that you were doing. Um, Mary Liz was talking to, to someone there. Beth was talking about how she starts her day. So uh, I'm going to share that. It's uh, about a two minute video for, uh, for us to watch. Um, but let me put this and... Good morning, it's Beth, and I'm here at the Inspired Home Show in Chicago. And I always say that one of the things you have to ask yourselves when you're coming to a market, when you're doing market planning, is where do you start first? And I'm just going to spin around so you can see that there are people everywhere, every single aisle, they're just coming and going. And there's so much to see and do, so market prep and market planning is so key. Welcome to the Houseware Show. This is one of my very favorite shows in the whole entire world. It only happens once a year. It hasn't happened for a couple of years until a year ago, but we're 
back on track. Everything is terrific. And I am here with my fabulous friend, Tom Robley. I've known him since, gosh, Long dinosaurs. <laughs> dinosaurs designed the products and the earth. And Tom is the inventor of Springboard. Yeah. Founder. And he is a fabulous trend projector, prognosticator. He knows everything about everything. And he's been, he's been to probably more shows than anybody I know except maybe at eight shows this year so far. Yeah, Paris, London, Milan, Frankfurt, Stockholm. I miss Stockholm. Oh, it's one of the best. But we're talking to our guests today about how to organize for a show. And what do you do before you get there? I think I think as important as preparing, but lots of people don't have time to prepare and see what's going to be at the show that they want to see. I think that you have to be strategic because when you get here, it's this flurry of great stuff in your face. But and some do, not so great stuff. And some not so great stuff, but you wind up you wind up suffering for that for time, right? So what we tend to do is. We our, our approach is first we go and see like mobile innovation, the GIA, the GIA display. We go and we see you know Discover Design. So whatever trend displays there are, we like to go and at see at any those. trade show, any at place any where they're talking show. about product and talking about what's happening in your industry. Go to the trade the trend displays first if they have them. If you're lucky enough that they have them, color displays uh, because you are going to want that to influence what you what you select. The other thing is it's so important to know your customer because a lot of times you're engaged by things that later on you're like oh that's not right for us. So go around say, constantly saying to yourself is this, is this right for my customers? Is this, this right? kind of like me where I find all these cute gadgets and I don't feel up and them my customers? It's it's exactly. So you wind up with like getting samples in and it's like ah oh, we're not going to do that so I'll take it home. But the, the idea is really go in focus on who your customer is because it's very easy to get distracted by things that you love that are really interesting, great foods. But if you go around... Excellent. I guess they got bored. <laughs> Cut up there. They, they cut it off there. But uh, thank you both for for recording those. And can I tell you one thing that Tom recommended? Yes. If you're walking an area of the show that has a lot of product for you, like high design, or you might want to consider walking each aisle twice, once in each direction, so that you don't spend your whole time bobbing your head back and forth because you will miss things. And mm -hmm. when you walk that aisle the other direction, you'll see things that were pointed the wrong way or whatever. So at those key areas, consider a double walk. Sorry to suggest that it's a little exhausting, but it's very, very helpful. No, a great suggestion. Great idea, yeah. Um, and actually, that almost that leads kind of into one of the questions that we had come in, uh, in with our, our Q and A. Um, this comes from Amy. Uh, she says that I work with vendors that design booths for various B two B, B two C events. Um, are there aspects of space design in branding that are positives for you? Lighting, seating, um, space to write orders, displays, or things that annoy the heck out of you. So as you're walking the halls, what are you looking for that might attract you or detract you from going into, into that vendor space? I want a well-lit display. Mm -hmm. If you're not going to spring for the lights, don't bother doing the show. I want it to be big enough. It doesn't have to be huge, but it has to be big enough that I can get in there and not feel like I'm totally trapped. I don't necessarily need to sit down for, especially for uh, the, the booth kind of stuff because we're generally in and out, but it's nice to have the space. And I do not want somebody attacking me in the middle of the aisle, trying to drag me by the hair into her booth. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, well lit, not having someone, a kind of pushy salesperson. Um, and priced. We want prices on the goods. Mm -hmm. so that we can pick it up and look at it. I know some vendors think it's a good idea to start a conversation with the customer by not pricing things. Well, this customer will lose interest pretty quickly if I, because usually if they haven't priced the goods, they also don't have the prices in their heads and they have to look them up and it slows me down. So please price everything, any vendors out there watching. And yeah, if you're a retailer out there, you know, if you're knowing you're not seeing it priced, you know, a good suggestion or uh, know that that, yeah, that's a, a detracting point. Mm -hmm. uh, Beth, what about you? Yeah, because uh, as we've said all along, time time is money and it's, you know, you only have, there, there are only so many days of market and there's only so many hours in every day. And so you've got to maximize every single minute. To that point, one of the things that I really appreciate, um, especially like, like in Atlanta, um, as you, and, and they do it. They do the same thing in Dallas as well. I don't go, get to uh, Las Vegas, but you know the the showrooms that'll have a place where you can finish writing your order out in the atrium, and you can you can actually you know now now we've 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 walked through and we've kind of uh, I'm with Mary Liz. If I can get an appointment at eight o'clock in the morning, I'm going to take it because I'm going to try to get in and get out before everybody gets there, and I'm going to try to do some of those key appointments and maximize just the sheer 
the sheer geography of a showroom, but being able to actually, you know, grab a cup of coffee, which, is, which I appreciate the, you know, I don't expect every vendor to be able to do it, but the bigger showrooms, I mean, I know where I can stop and get lunch and I know where I can stop and get a cup of coffee, not because I'm taking advantage of any particular showroom. I'm a customer, but I know that I can, I can streamline my time by stopping here and, you know, grabbing a water or stopping there and, and get it, and doing something like that. I don't expect it in the smaller showrooms or, you know, in high design or anything like that. Um, there I'm with Mary Liz. I don't, don't, don't try to get me, you know, use your display to visually attract me. If it's something that I'm interested in, I'm going to come over to you. Um, you don't have to, you know, um, it, it's like, uh, it, uh, the parallel I'm drawing is, is, uh, you know, we'll get a call at the store, um, you know, two weeks before market and somebody is frantic to, you know, to, to find me to set up an appointment. And I've reminded all of my associates, I said, if it's two weeks before market and there's a rep who I want to have an appointment with, I made that appointment three months ago. Sure. So they're, they're them calling saying, oh, I have, like I have to talk to Beth. It's like, no, I I already have those appointments all set up. And the same thing. If I'm walking down that aisle and I and I look and I see what you have and it is not attractive to me, I'm going to keep walking because my time is valuable. So if I come to you, then just then then you you struck you struck that, but you're not going to do it for everybody. Would you say I do though. Um, on the call, people who call me who I've never met before and they want me to make an appointment for something I probably don't want, I do make a list of all of those people in the order I'm going to find them in the building so that I know on floor five, I should be looking to look at little Lulu's lovely cards and on yeah. you know floor five, just so that I can give them the politeness of saying, I've taken a look, thank you so much, and then I run. Right. <laughs> and the other thing that I do is I keep, I keep a notes page in my phone all year long. It's a running notes page. And if I've seen something in an industry magazine, if I've seen something in a store someplace when I was shopping out of town, then, then there's a brand that I want to make sure that I, and, and I don't have a chance to research it. I, I you know, I, I went through my um, Dallas Market app last night with all the, with all those brands that I have in my phone to say, okay, who, of all these people, who, who are in Dallas, who do I want to get in to see? And again, I'm with you, Mary Liz. I have a couple of people that I'm currently not buying from maybe in the future. And I'll make the, uh, you know, that have, have sent me beautiful samples and I'll make it, I'll take the time to stop in and say, thank you so much for sending that. You know, I, again, that, that, I, I have a regard. I came from the, I, I, I didn't come from sales in uh, retail, but I came from the sales side of the business. So I have a regard for a sales rep and a really, and a good sales rep. Um, who's mindful of my time, but willing to, you know, try to to cut, walk the floors of my store and know what I have, and be able to recommend brands and recommend lines. So, and that um, I, I think kind of leads into finding new lines. And I know a lot of time is at, at, while at show going towards um, lines that we are you already carry uh, that you know that you're looking for what's new and what's trending but there is that aspect of wanting to find new things there are you doing that based on those that have called you and um, that you have on your notes page um, you also had mentioned going out and shopping throughout that town or how else are you looking to find new lines and um, making sure you allocate time for that talking to everybody Mm -hmm. I found great sources while I was waiting in line for the ladies room okay. or putting ketchup on my must, uh, mustard on my hot dog. When mm -hmm. somebody says, oh, I found this wonderful thing or I sell a lot of these. Tell me about your store. T chat them up on the bus. Talk to everybody you can talk to. And it's amazing how many things you can pick up. Yeah. Plus everything you just said. <laughs> What'd she say? Realize the that? Plus everything you, could, you just said about. Yeah. 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 Um, I agree. You know, for, for, for example, here, I, I just wrote down four hands because I don't know that line. And Mary Liz is at four hands today. And so, you know, because I have a regard for her in retail, I'm going to, uh, and I'm now selling furniture. I'm like, oh, I'm going to, I will definitely check that out. Um, We've been I'll, buying from this company for 18 years and it's a fabulous company. Yeah. And they're treating us really, really well, except for letting the lights go off. <laughs> <laughs> um, the temp, the temporaries for me, I, I'm also, I'm also mindful for, of, um, two of the top selling lines that I've had in my store were from a rep who was not going to market, who um, who knew my store, knew my product line two years ago and said, Beth, please, 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 if you have time when you're in Atlanta, I want you to look at these two, these two new lines. And um, she so she I, she wasn't with me. She just sent me there because she knew one of them was Warmies and I order Warmies once a week. Um, because you know it's that uh, stuffed animal that, I, that you put in the microwave. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. But it was it was the fact that she knew she knew my store, she knew my customers, and she, and she made the recommendation. She wasn't even there. Um, but then again, um, 
in in a showroom it's it, i always like to know from the from a, my rep in a showroom what's selling the best and i also want them to be able to say this is up and coming this is this is something new but but you know we have lots of people that are buying it you know i may not end up buying it but i want i want that little insider information um mary liz you would talk in your video about the difference of knowing what is right for me that I personally like versus knowing what is right for my customer. And I think that is such a, a huge thing when we're at show. I mean, there's so many things and you do get attracted to what you like, but how do you balance that idea of, I like this a whole lot versus I think my customers are going to like this a whole lot. Well, obviously I buy a lot of the stuff that I like a whole lot and I'm not price constrained on that because I like it a whole lot. It makes my store look wonderful and magical and full. But the things that my customer wants, that's why we're in business. Is it to be, Marshall Field said it, said it the best. He said, retail simple, give the lady what she wants. <laughs> Sometimes the lady doesn't know what she wants and it's our job to show her things that she didn't know she wanted. But I look from my customer's eyes more than from my own. Mm -hmm. When I bought my store five years ago from somebody who'd been in retail for 35 years, one of the things that she said to me is she said, Beth, you will be tired of it way before your customer will, mm -hmm. because you looked at it ahead of time. You bought it ahead of time. You've had, you've been selling it for two or three years. And now you're like, okay, let's just move on. So it's like the coasters, like let's move on to something. Yeah, else. You can only dream about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she said, you, you, you have to, you have to look at your analytics. You have to look at your sales. And if there's, if they're still buying gnomes, you have to still buy gnomes. And the other thing we have to remember is in many categories, if you come into our store and you're not looking for a sofa, you're not seeing the sofas that are there. When you're ready to look, you're going to see what's in stock. Mm -hmm. So your entire inventory does not have to change constantly because the lady who's looking for this is looking for it that day. And it's absolutely essential that you define your key lines and never, ever run out of them. Yeah. It's like milk at the grocery store. When they come in for that lemon, lavender grass, whatever it is, candle, you have to have it because your customers, we sell Nora Fleming. We have all of it in stock. If Nora's got it, we've got it because our customers depend on it. Mm -hmm. So we always have to, to define those winners that keep us in business. Yeah. And, and it's one of you, you mentioned that with Nora Fleming, we have a couple of lines. We sell gurgle pots and we carry every single color, every single, you know, they have three different sizes. We have this huge display that has, you know, and people walk in and they go, they walk by and they're like, what's with the fish pot? You know, what's like, what's that you can't, you almost can't walk by and not. And so some of it is if you're going to embrace a brand, if it's going to be a part of, you know, part of what you do, then, then to truly, to truly embrace it and really bring it to your customers. And so if I walk into Leon and Lulu and I know that I can get anything Nora Fleming, as opposed to someplace else where they carry a little bit of it, you know, I mean, that's going to draw me there for sure. And Beth, Gurgle Pot is a great example of the things we've been talking about. I went to Seattle to the gift show met up with a friend who had a store in Seattle and we spent the day looking at other stores. And when we were in his store, he said, look at these gurgle pots. We sell tons of them. And I went, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> so I bought them. We have had, as you do, every single color in stock and we have been carrying them for more than 15 years and they continue to sell and they continue to delight, to delight people. I can't, I can't believe how many we sell. We had Matt and Jen, Matt is the creator of Gurgle Pots and we're fortunate because they live in Seattle. So they were out and they were, he was our featured artist at Art Walk uh, last week. And he stood on the street and signed Gurgle Pots for our customers. Ooh, fun. Our customers bring them from home. I'm calling and, her and, and tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> they brought their moms for Mother's Day to Coeur d'Alene for the weekend. And then we had the pleasure of having Matt sign Gurgle Pots for us. I That's really nice. We've had Nora Fleming doing the same thing, but we don't yeah. let them bring their stuff in from home. They have to buy new stuff. <laughs> we, but we, sold plenty, we sold plenty of new stuff. <laughs> I think both what you're saying goes into, you know, the preparation that you're doing ahead of time to know what your best sellers are, what the, what the milk is uh, that you need to have every day. You need to have these lines and being able to understand that, prepare for that, um, and then allow you to kind of look for, look for new things to, to help supplement that. Um, but knowing what, and knowing, you know, your business uh, to, to know what the, the, those inventory requirements are. Um, 
you know, have some time for, for uh, Q&A and some questions. If you all have any questions that you all would like to type in, um, please do so. Um, Beth and Mary Liz, are there any events that are, that are going on in your store while we're waiting for some questions to come in um, that if people are in Clawson, Michigan, in the Detroit area or Coeur d'Alene, um, that they, they would love to you know, see at your store? Anything coming up? We've got our Sofa, Sofa King intense furniture sale this weekend. Oh, excellent. We have two circus tents put up behind the, the store and we will have furniture. We hope we sell it. Yeah. We have uh, <laughs> 40, 20 by 80 feet of tent full wow. of markdown furniture. Wow. wow. And I did you see something that was maybe last weekend you had um, an advertisement with the, the circus tents uh, going on as well? Uh, last weekend we had the open air fair, which was a citywide uh, opening of the social district where people can buy cocktails and walk around with them. Oh, wow. Wow. That's very awesome. Um, I'm fortunate. I live in a, I live in a resort town. And so we have a very, very vibrant downtown association and uh, we, they host an event every single month. Um, and so next month, uh, Father's Day weekend is Car Lane, which is a classic car show. So Coeur d'Alene, Car Lane. Um, we host an, uh, uh, we host an Ironman event the weekend after that. Fourth of July is the weekend after that. The weekend after that is Brew Fest, which is a huge brewery event in the park. And two weekends after that, they close the street down for four whole days into a street fair. So we have, um, if you're if you're thinking about going someplace on vacation and you want to come to Coeur d'Alene, we've, we've got plenty of things for you to do here. Very nice. And two new store, and a, a new store there, but uh, mix it up, home, mix up homey and mix it up gift, yep. um, as well as Leon and Lulu in, in Clawson, Michigan. So doesn't look like we have any questions coming in. So uh, we'll wrap up here today. But Beth and Mary Liz, thank you so much for being on, talking about all the things that you're doing in preparation for shows, what you're doing at shows to really maximize your time and making sure you're, you're getting the most out of it. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on today. See you thank you, Beth. And thank you all of you who listened to us. We appreciate it. Very much. Absolutely. A uh, little bit of a plug for our next uh, upcoming webinar. So at the end of June, um, author Bridget Brennan will be on. She has written a couple books, uh, one called Why She Buys and another called Winning Her Business, uh, talking about the female consumer and the power of the female consumer. So she'll be talking about um, uh, customer experiences into uh, market, market towards the female consumer. So um, the most influential buyer that you have. So she will be on next month. That is June 28th. And uh, thank you all very much for being on, for donating your time uh, to, to Hard on Main Street and, and learning a lot today. So uh, thank you very Happy much. Happy Memorial Day. Thanks, Patrick. Happy Memorial Day. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.